All right, welcome everyone. Uh, so today we have some delicious Core 21 product to be opening. Um, we have the main event, which is Core 2021. As you can see, the fairy on the top there. Uh, but first, before we get to that, uh, we have a pre-release pack I'm gonna open. You can see what is inside our Core 21 pre-release. It's funny how, uh, like these things are gotten so compact, like remember they used to be gigantic, especially like the Ravnica boxes were quite like wide and they've really uh, compacted them down into a nice little tight package here. So yeah, let's take a look and uh, see what we uh, have in our pre-release pack first. Um, I'm actually gonna be keeping this one together too because uh, we're gonna be playing uh, one day in the future when we're allowed to get together and uh, with friends and play and be playing with some people, so. It's, uh, it's cool to, uh, to be able to actually build a deck. And... All right, so you can see we get our standard uh, M21 die. And yeah, this kind of reminds me, I think it's the uh, Eldrain. Not Eldrain, I'm sorry, El uh, Eldritch Moon, where they had like this little compartment and it had all these like clues and stuff written on it. It seems like they've kind of just kept the same packaging from that. All right, so we get, what is this, our Life and Times of the Fairy uh, chronology. And it explains you how to build a deck, which is, I think is really great. They used to put these on like the little tip cards and it was kind of annoying that, you know, if you didn't get one of those in your packs as like a new player, you wouldn't be able to build. But this is actually a really great uh, tool that I'm glad they include. All right, so we have our pre-release card, which is our stamped scavenging ooze. So same art as before. Still cool nonetheless. Uh, let me get our arena code. <laughs> oh, thanks, Richard. And thanks for joining me. All right, so first pack. We get our soldier token. We get a basic land at the front of the pack. Foil on substantiate, peer into abyss. So it seems like they're doing kind of reverse uh, on the packs. Then we get an obsessive stitcher, selfless saver. So this is the one mana kind of save your other creature card. Pretty strong. Uh, reprinted riddle form, the tur turret ogre, Teferi's uh, protege, skeleton archer, rise again. Another Ranger's Guile, Frantic yeah, Inventory. It's a cool rub. I guess it's not a reprint, right? Because the original one uh, accumulated, it was Accumulated Knowledge, counts all graveyards. So it's kind of like the fixed one. And there you go. Okay, so it seems like you gotta pa open the packs in reverse order, otherwise you're gonna spoil, uh, spoil what you get out the hop. But that's a really interesting design because that's the one that allows you to draw a discard and then when you want, you can sacrifice to uh, get the creature back. So it has kind of like the lootering effect along with the ability to bring back if you want to discard something. So it's a little bit of a combo on its own. All right, so let's start with the back of the pack. So I'm just gonna fly through our... Uh... Oh, hi, Melissa. Oh, thank you. Yeah, hopefully we'll get something decent. So I know this one's in the... Um... So in the Boros decks, I saw have that card. Which, on it, when you look on its own, it's pretty bad, right? Two mana, one, two, that, like, you can pump it. Nothing. But it's the uh, uh, red-white uh, creature that can go fetch that and another one of the uh, so, uh, dogs, sorry. I think it's a white one that can go fetch. So just a lot of value off that. There's a Radiant Fountain. That's cool. The pig. All right, so here are our comments. So Surge Striker, Volcanic Geyser, Pestilence Haze. Oh, that's cool. There's a lot more. Uh, let me flash this one up there. So it's got the ability to remove two loyalty counters from each Planeswalker. So it seems like they're starting to finally incorporate like incidental Planeswalker hate just on other cards. Because, I mean, three mana for minus two, minus two is kind of the standard. So it's nice that they actually incorporated that. Oh, yeah, that is weird that it put the... Huh. I don't know. Something wrong with the chat. And our rare is Sabra, uh, Sabira, 
Uh, let's see. Every turn creature gets can't be blocked this turn. Discard your hand until end turn. Whenever you creature you control with power two or less deals combat damage to a player. Draw a card. It's cool. I mean, it's definitely I could see being one that's you know he's playing some kind of aggressive deck. I mean, be able to make your creatures unblockable seems pretty sweet, even if they don't have like a good ability. And we get one of the fancy planes. Look at that. That's pretty awesome. It's a shame they couldn't make them all like that. Let me get our soldier token. Actually, let me just put the rares. I'll throw the rares up on the bottom where you can see what we opened. Don't look at the top. Okay, let's flip through our commons. Ooh, Divine Strike got reprinted. It's a good one to have in this format. Wish it with Feather. Though I guess they're gonna be rotating uh, at the same time. So here's the of the Landlord Visionary. So that's the uh, Elvish Visionary stapled with Landlord Elf. It's cool. I don't be surprised if it sees play outside limited, but you know, it's a cool uh, effect. All right, so here's our first uncommon. So eliminate. I've actually have already seen some people playing this one. So destroy target creature or planeswalker converted mana cost three or less. That's quite uh, quite strong, right? That's the kind of card you need to be able to keep some of these busted planeswalkers in check. Uh, we get looks like Skyway Sniper. There's a good breach creature. That should be our third uncommon, which is Chandra's Pyrling. And our rare is Containment Priest. That's a pretty cool one. I'm glad it finally got put into standard. Therefore, and then modern more specifically. And it looks like you can get um, dual lands in the spot of basic lands. Which is cool because then that helps limited, right? Especially like this kind of a set. We get some good fixing without having to... Uh, because, I mean, let's, you know, let's be honest, right? Who cares about the basic land spot? So we are going to get, it looks like we get a emblem. So maybe we'll get lucky and get the uh, card that goes with it, huh? All right, fly through these. Ooh, Grasp of Darkness. That's a good tool for block decks. All right, so we get the Season Hollow Blade. So discard a card, gain the Instructable, gets tapped. Seems kind of uh, pretty good. I'm not sure if it's quite as good as the uh, Vampire that you can pay life and make Indestructible, but still, discarding a card isn't uh, the worst. Okay, Warden of the Woods. So it becomes a target of spell ability, an opponent controls, you may draw two cards. Pretty good. Uh, seems like a pain and limited to deal with. Rewind. Oh, that's a that's a Nurse's Saga original, and they even kept the original art too, which is pretty cool. Yeah, that's annoying. <laughs> I don't know if it's gonna be like a home running control deck, but if it is, like, ugh, free counter spells are never good. All right, and looks like we get a foil in this pack. So our rare is Maze Mind Tome. Not exactly a uh, barn burner for limited. And our foil is. Looks like a uh, Surge Strike, so one double striker attacks, tap in number creature control, gets plus one for each creature tapped this way. So you get to make a big, huge creature, Put that I guess there. And then our token, or land, sorry, is a forest, and we get the emblem. So the, sadly, the emblem was the most exciting part about that pack. Yeah, thank you, yeah. Ooh, Ops back. Good version. Turn Slag's always quite a great removal spell. Colossal Dreadmon. <laughs> See, I don't have as much hatred as, like, I know people online always complain about Colossal Dreadmon. Like, to me, it doesn't matter if it is, it's in the sad or if it's, like, another giant 6-6. Six -six. Like, it's basically a meme at this point anyway, so you might as well just keep running with it. Okay, so we got Kinetic Augur. So trample power uh, power is equal to the number of instants in your sorceries in your graveyard. 
Edge the battlefield, drop two guards. Discard up two guards, sorry, and then draw that many cards. Not bad. Definitely be a fine limited card. No, no, I think you still have a Crackling Dragon Standard. Ooh. The Mirror can add two mana. Solid one. We get Vin Ring Mirror. Isn't, wasn't this a rare before? I could have sworn that was a rare in like another core set. And our rare. Looks like we get another foil too. So, I mean, that's a nice thing. You can see that you have a foil without even looking at it. And we get Cabric, the Spiteful. So, this is the uh, minus one, minus one guy. Well, that's good. Yeah, I'm sorry about that. Maybe try refreshing it. See if it gets uh, any better. And then our foil is <laughs> Fetid Imp. There you go. Death touching guy. And our land, Scoured Barons. And our token is our bird. All right, this last pack better be uh, better be where the money is, because uh, other than the containment priest, nothing. Is, I guess scavenging moves, obviously. Nothing has been really wowing. Ooh, feet of resistance! Wow, they're like reprinting the whole uh, heroic deck. Got a love into the crab. The rest always good. All right, so our first uncommon is Enthralling Hold. So just the classic uh, control enchanted creature effect. But it seems like they've limited to only tapped creatures. Probably a smart idea. And this is the Wildwood Scourge. So this is the one that whenever uh, one or more counters, plus one counters is placed on another non hydro creature control, he gets a counter. So he's pretty good with the, the new... Um, uh, Green white creature that adds more counters. And we get Light of Promise, so enchanted creature. Maybe gain life, uh, put that many plus one counters on this creature. And then our rare is Teferi's Insight. There you go. So if you draw a card, except the first one you draw on each of your draw steps, draw two cards instead. Seems like a sweet build around. And then we get our Sapperling. So that is the pool. Um, yeah, I have no idea what the actual build would be, but yeah, it's kind of all over the place too. I mean, obviously taking out the uncommons. Looking at the rares. I mean, I think he's definitely strong, but really, I guess it depends on how your deck goes. I haven't looked at the card draw to see how good Teferi's uh, Ageless Insight would be, but drawing two cards is always good. Yeah, you might be right. Black White might be the way to go. Like, you know, this kind of effect, obviously, you're not really playing it for that. You know, you're not really going to be doing much with it, but still a 2-2 flash. Serviceable, I guess. Okay, let me put these out of the way. Okay, so before we get to the box, um, they also included two Jumpstart packs. This is from uh, Wizards. Yeah, you might be right. I've been taking a too close a look, but green definitely could be. Uh, I mean, Scooze is definitely always good in any anything you can build it in. So the green might be worthy of a splash. All right, so we have two Jumpstart packs to open as well. Um, I don't know what the the price on these is, but I, I was looking at some of the prices of the singles, and there's quite a few um, that are pretty expensive. So what these are, are essentially what they, they you're supposed to do with these is you're supposed to take two of them like this, stick them together, shuffle them up, and then just play like a, basically like a pack war style game. So the idea is that each pack has its own theme and that you can just put smash two together and you'll get two different themes. So for instance, like on the package, you, you might have goblins and dogs or it might also be like um, clerics and you know wizards or something. So you could have like a, a goblin wizard deck or like a dog you know, whatever kind of deck, right? So it's they're just meant to be played right out of the pack. So, yeah. So I looked it up, and it's my understanding that they had the boot, the basic lands already in them. But you know what? We're going to find out for ourselves right now. From what I what I read, it sounds like this is their attempt to kind of do like a Hearthstone deal. Not Hearthstone, I mean Keyforge deal. 
So even though you'll get like a theme, if I get goblin a goblin pack, it may not necessarily be the exact same goblin pack you open. There are some variations, and then there's also apparently you can get multiple rares or something within each. Um, like some packs will have like a mythic and a rare or something. I don't know, something like that. So it looks like they become um, kind of packaged already. And we got the ever exciting walls theme. So that sounds really exciting. I know. Everyone wants to play a walls deck, so. I mean, the one cool thing with this product is that, you know, if you can kind of keep your, one, you keep them together, you can almost, you can do something else with them too, right? Like if you know what's in each, each one that you open, you don't necessarily, you can, you know, shuffle them, uh, separate them after you're done playing with them and then put two other combinations together. So then it looks like too that this is a green deck because it has the green uh, mana symbol there in the bottom corner. So uh, this is number 43, I guess. I don't know if that is just walls are 43 or what's in this. So let's see what we get. All right, so we do get a mythic. So we get Towering uh, Titan. So enter the battlefield uh, with X counters on it, where X is the total toughness of other creatures you control. Sacrifice a creature with defender. All other creatures gain trample until end of turn. So big giant. So there are some original cards and then there's a lot of reprints in this. So let's look at this is a double rare pack. So we also got an assault formation. So this makes sense in a wall deck. So this allows you to, uh, you know, attack with your walls. Okay, so we get carve and carry added. A card draw wall. We get a gargoyle sentinel. Overgrown battlements. This card is pretty sweet. Especially if you get, ever get two of these out, they add two mana each. Wall of blossoms. That's awesome. Looks like there is an enchantment. Oh, okay, this is their equipment. I mean, this one allows you to uh, attack as though they didn't have defender. So essentially the whole deck is just ways for it to go around the defender. And then this is, I think this is, yeah, this is a new card. And that's the weird thing about this. I was looking at it. So this card has the M21 uh, symbol, but every other card that's not from M21 has the regular, uh, the regular, I guess, um, jumpstart symbol. So we get a crushing canopy. Grave Bramble, look at that. Protection from Zombies. So I think these also are unique. So these ones allow you to name uh, another color other than green and it adds basically one of uh, that color or green to your mana pool. Which is good, I guess, if you're gonna be mixing, you know, to potentially another theme with it. Wall of Vines, Roving uh, Keep. That looks like an original card. And then it looks like we're getting, yeah. So it gives you all the basic lanes you need in the deck. So there you go. You know, again, I don't know what the retail like is going to be on these. If they're going to, you know, I imagine they're going to be, well, it being 20 cards, I mean, if there are lands, there's probably going to be a little more than a regular booster pack, but it's a uh, interesting idea. So we'll put the, put walls back in their uh, pack. All right, and we'll get to the other one. So let's see what we get besides walls. And our other theme is reanimated. Well, this one's right up my alley. So this is our black deck. So I don't know if all the themes are just single color. I mean, it would kind of make sense, I guess. I wouldn't want to give somebody three colors. It came off a little bit easy. All right, and we got a little crow there. So I know I'll do it in reverse order because it looks like the rares are on top. So let's get our, our basics out of the way. Well, that's really cool artwork. I don't know if that's, oh, this is an original art, I think. That'd look really awesome, like even full art. Okay, so we get Gloom Sower. So that's like the M21 card. Uh, looks like the uh, black it must be probably one of these in every pack for the color it's in it. Rename the another color for it to generate mana of. Soul Salvage. Yeah. Which rename is this? Uh, the Mummy. Oh, you do want the number on it? Uh, it's, uh, it says it's 31. I don't know if that matters. Oh, okay, there's four different ones. Okay, well, I guess we'll find out. Funeral Rites. Crow of Dark Tidings. 
Rise again. M21 card. Crypt Looker, another M21 card. Another Eliminate, that's cool. Goreman. So this this pack seems to have a lot of M21 cards in it. Alright, so we get a Meyer Triton. So I know that's a recent one from uh, Theros. Carrion Grub, so another M21. And this should be a rare, which is Rise of the Dark Realms. And I know that one's a couple bucks. It's a reprint. I think it's the original uh, Liliana's um, Ultimate. So that's a good one. Seems like that was pretty good value then. Not that one. So one day I'm going to have to play somebody with my wall reanimation deck. Okay, so um, when it comes to the box, um, this is the buy box promo. So you get uh, Rin and Siri, inseparable. So our cat dog, Naya card. So clearly meant to be a command com commander when you get uh, generating cats and dogs from playing each other. And deals damage equal to the number of dogs you control and you gain life equal to the number of cats you control. So that's a pretty cool effect and i like that it allows you to kind of catch up with your dogs because there's been a lot of good cat uh, cards for commander but this card allows you to kind of do a lot more of them if you're not playing that many so that's it now i also got these now these aren't guaranteed to come with the, your box depending on where you're buying it from but these are the two promos that they recently gave out for the store so we got the mecha godzilla which is your hanger back walker and then you got your reliquary tower alternate artwork so this is more like a, uh, if your stores have them still, kind of thing. Oh, Rami at four. Okay, cool. Thanks, Richard. All right, so main event time. Yeah, it is nice getting a lot of like value for for free. I mean, the buy boxes aren't what they once were. I mean, I remember the first few ones. They used to be pretty good. Now it's kind of, I mean, after the whole Nexus of Fate debacle, I don't blame them for making more, um, you know, kind of commanderish cards. And also, it's less feel bad if you don't get one with your box, like if they sell out or something like that. You don't really want people. Being like not buying the box because they don't get to buy a box. Yeah, it'd be nice to get a play set of those uh, hanger backs, but it's probably crazy expensive. Back to the Ugin. <laughs> yeah. Well, I remember like when uh, originally Ugin was um, it was going it was going to rotate. I think I had three of them, and I sold one of them because I'm like, well, I want to get some money because like they always back then they always seem to drop. And I already had enough for Tron, and then it's like, no, the card just. Jumped up in crazy value. All right, so we're just going to skip through our commons unless there's something relevant. So it seems like these packs are back to being normal. It is very odd how the uh, pre-release ones were in a different order. Okay, so we get our shrine. So I don't know if you guys are playing back when Kamigawa came out, but they had like, the cycle of shrines. It looks like they brought them back. So this one, um, let me see. Each opponent loses X life and gain X life for X to the number of shrines you control. Cool. Oh, there's another selfless saver, savior. So that's a cool one. That's definitely one of the dogs I can see seeing a lot of play. I like that, unlike the um, one from Dominaria, the Dauntless Bodyguard, this one you don't have to name another creature. You can just sacrifice it. Now, of course, this is only a 1 1, so that's your trade off, but that seems almost better in a lot of cases. And here's one of our colored artifacts. So this one gets a plus one counter for each. Uh, soul counter, and then a creature, creature dies, put a soul counter on it. So it just gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And our rare is See the Truth. So look at the top three cards of your library, put one into your hand, the rest on the bottom of your library in any order. This spell is cast anywhere other than your hand, put each of those cards into your hand instead. I think this is the one that reads really impressive, because you know, if you snap cast with this back, you just, it just becomes a draw three. But yeah, I have no idea. I'm not a, not a blue mage, so I couldn't tell you. 
Oh, did it? Oh, yeah, that wouldn't surprise me. Because, uh, I mean, they finally made dogs, so. Ooh, look at that art, uh, token. The prowess uh, goblin. That's pretty cool. Yeah, it would not surprise me if, uh, like any original art now, it seems like it's going to be really expensive. You know, quite frankly, I, you know, it's probably a pretty good investment too, if you, uh, to get some original magic art. Oh, that's cool. That's kind of, that reminds me of the art from the spell book, right? I don't know if that's what they're going for, but that looks cool. I do enjoy that there's a lot more like stuff like that in the, in the sets that are, isn't quite like, you know, it's not like a big deal, you know, it's not a huge deal, but it's when you see it in a pack, it just kind of pops and looks nice. So this is Chrome Le Replicator. So enters the battlefield. If you control two or more non-land, non-token permanents with the same name as one another, create a 4-4 colorless construct. So you basically, you get your eight power for five mana. There's our Carrying Grub again. So it gets plus X plus X, where X is the greatest power among creature cards in your graveyard. When it enters the battlefield, mill four. So a pretty sweet self-mill card. Oh, I think I see a mythic. <laughs> uh, and then we get Basri Solidarity, so put a plus one counter on each creature you control. And it's got that kind of a fancy frame. And is it a blue one? It's a blue one. I think that's a borderless uh, Teferi there. Yeah, that's true. Did they do look kind of foily when you do it? So that is our fancy Teferi right there. You get a sleeve for that before I forget. I mean, there's so many arts on this, it's going to be uh, hard keeping track, but. I know a borderless card when I see one, so that one's pretty uh, easy to remember. Then we get our Liliana Steward, a Jungle Hollow, and the same beast token they've been using forever. So that's a bingo right there. <laughs> well, that makes up for the lackluster uh, release pack, I guess. I mean, I haven't actually, you know, obviously gotten a chance to play with the fairy, but the few times I've seen people play him, he seems quite strong, like just being able to filter cards off every turn. It's just that annoying like ability to do it on your opponent's turn. It just drives you nuts as a non-blue player. It's like, yep. Just feels, even if it's just discarding drawing, it just feels like they're getting way ahead of you on the board. All right, so we get another uh, Black Shrine. Uh, Trader's Creed. So gain control of target creature for land a turn. Untap that creature. It gains haste. Add two mana of any one color. Okay. So it's semi-free. Okay. So this is a Silver Smoke Ghoul. So this one I saw being played in Dredged already. So this has the beginning of your end step. If you gain three or more life this turn, return Silver Smoke uh, Ghoul from your graveyard to the battlefield tapped. Uh, pay two, sacrifices, draw a card. So obviously you can use this in Dredge so when you uh, gain through life with your Lightning Helix from the graveyard. Use it. Our rare is our Solemn Simulacrum. So our buddy is back for, I think, his third duty in Standard. And there, and there. It's forced in there. Okay. Yeah, I don't know if opening up the fairy decreases the odds of the Yugen, but you never know. Maybe I'll just have to get a foil then. Alright, so here's more commons. All right, so we get Falconer Adept. So this is our, when it attacks, create a 1-1 one, one bird, creature with token and flying, and that's tapped and attacking. So four mana, so most likely a limited fodder. So the classic cultivates back. 
So even better. I mean, this is Pilgrim Rage is clearly better for green decks, but this one is uh, um, was you know obviously it's better than any, any other style of two color deck. Yeah, I don't know why the Prilly's packs are backwards. Maybe wonder like I, uh, just weird. Maybe you'll have to see when you open yours if you're uh, having the same issue. Okay, so we get Avon Gaggle Master. So this enters the battlefield. You gain two life for each creature with flying control. So again, another uh, limited all star. And we get another mythic. So this is Mangara the Diplomat. So 2 4 a lifelinker. Whenever an opponent attacks with a creature, if two or more of those creatures are attacking you and or a planeswalker you control, draw a card. And whenever an opponent casts their second spell each turn, draw a card. So it's got a lot of attacks, a lot of card drawing going on it. So seems like this is part of their effort maybe for white to get more, uh, you know, white some more action. And we get a foily. Thrashing Brontodon. Which reminds me, I think we grab the other four leaf. Another pack. And we get a Night Token. So let me just find the other one before I forget. For my other pack. Okay. Ooh, there's a unicorn in this set. Always cool to see. Okay, so we get Griffin Airy. So at the end of your end step, if you gain three or more life this turn, create a 2-2 white Griffin token with flying. That's a pretty cool effect. Okay, so we get our 1-1 one, one, uh, lifelink Archfiend's Vessel. So when it enters the battlefield, if it enters from your graveyard or you cast it from your graveyard, Exile it if you do create a 5 5 black demon token with flying. So, this is clearly a card that you're meant to abuse with different effects to get a 5 5 flyer. Seems pretty good. Uh, Dire Fleet Warmonger. So, this is like a card right out of Ixalan. Uh, so, 3 mana at the beginning of combat on your turn, you may sacrifice another creature. If you do, it gets plus 2 plus 2 and trample until end of turn. There you go. 3 mana, 5 5 trampler. And a rare. Is Idol of Endurance. So enters the battlefield, exile all creature cards with converted mana cost three or less from your graveyard until Idol on of uh, uh, Endurance leaves the battlefield. Until end of turn, you may cast a creature spell from Idol on uh, exiled with Idol on without without paying its mana cost. Nice. So just another way to rebuy your creature. I mean, it's probably too slow in, in you know, the long run, but what are you going to do? And we get a foil Silver Smoke Ghoul. That's awesome. That is awesome for Dredge. Because it's funny, despite like all the rares, usually having like a million copies of foil, borderless, you know, showcase, foil, regular showcase. Like a lot of the commons and uncommons still only have like one printing. Besides the, uh, like the foil and then this. And then we get a demon token. So there you go. When you make your 5 5 demon, you have something to make with it. I'm really happy about that. That's going in dredge, I think. Pegasus. Okay, another uh, ring wear mare, wing wing mare. So our one two one flyer. Non creature spells cost one more to cast. Indulging Pat patrician. Just love that art though. It's like very like Castlevania style. So it's a one four flying life. Think if the end step. If you gain three or more life this turn, each opponent loses. Three life. So it seems like that's kind of a theme with this set, the gain three life thing. And then we get a Havoc Jester, where we sacrifice a permanent, deals one damage to any target. Not quite uh, Mayhem Devil. And then our rare is Vito, Thorn of Dusk Rose. So whenever you gain life, target opponent loses that much life. So this is one they're talking about as like the new Splinter Twin. Um, because uh, you can, um, I don't know, there's like a, like a split card or something. An Ors off split card that allows you to combo with this. And we get a foil read the tides. So draw three cards, return three creatures in our hand. So it seems quite good and a little limited. And our foil, or foil, our token is an angel. I will say they, the tokens look a lot like nicer now. They really uh, stepped up their token. I think when they changed the framing, it really uh, helped. 
they can pop. <laughs> cancel. Always cancel. I mean, you could say the thing about dress, but like dress is actually like a really playable card. So, okay, no problem uh, with printing dress in every format. Okay, so we get Hellkite Punisher. So it looks like our generic dragon, six six flyer. Fire breathing though, that's pretty nice. Just straight up fire breathing. Ooh, Kite Tail Freebooters back. I can dust off my old ones. Bring those out. And then we get the green shrine. So this one adds uh, X mana. If any one color to mana pool, where X is the number of shrines you control. So I think the original one used to make 1-1 one, one tokens in Kamigawa, in uh, Champions Kamigawa. Remember that was pretty annoying, like if you're, you're playing against it. But it means three mana, just even if this is the only shrine you have, it's pretty strong. Obviously any shrines you add. And this can actually help pay for any additional shrines, even if you don't have the right colors. And then we get another containment priest. So can't be upset with that. Sweet card. And we get a very pretty island. And our token card. I don't know why they still make double-sided advertisement cards, but I guess that's just me. So we get another frantic crash through. <laughs> Michael Stasco, or uh, Invitational card. Scorching Dragon Fire. Okay, so we get uh, Tempered Veterans. So this looks like it puts a plus one counter on target creature with a plus one counter on it, and then put a plus one counter on target creature. So obviously this is meant to work with that uh, Hydra to kind of add more counters, and then if a creature doesn't have any counters, yeah, it's a really overcost ability to do so. Miss Cast, so counter target instant or sorcery spell, and this is controller pays three. So interesting negate for one mana. I mean this one I could definitely see uh, seeing play in some formats. It's kind of like a spell pierce effect. So you know these cards kind of look innocuous, but they can be really annoying. And then we get our Blue white uh, watcher of the spears. So, flying creature spells with flying cast cost one less cast. And another creature with flying into the battlefield in control, this gets plus one plus one until end of turn. So, this is kind of the lord for flying creatures. And the cost is right. So, this one I could definitely see, you know, somebody playing a low to the ground flying deck with this. And really taking advantage of the cost reduction. And looks like we get a rare, and it's pack leader. There's the good boy, so he looks like he's the lord, so he gives other dogs plus one plus one, and when he attacks, permanent all combat damage will be dealt this turn to dogs you control. Which is nice, because usually it'd say other dogs you control. You know, obviously putting himself at risk, but in this case, they, uh, I guess, wanted to push him a little bit more and make sure that he uh, wouldn't be put into harm's way. So that's pretty cool. Ooh, we get another pretty planes. And a sweet angel token. All right, so Tormod's Crypt is back. Uh, I don't know. I would imagine they probably do, but I mean, I, whoops. Um, but you know, I can't say for sure. I mean, maybe we'll get one. Who knows? So now we got another uh, Watcher of the Spheres. Another Carrion Grub and Transmorgify. So exile target uh, creature. That creature's controller reveals cards at the top of their library until they reveal a creature card. Puts it on the battlefield and shuffles the rest into their library. So essentially this is a functional um, reprint of uh, Polymorph. With the same kind of problem where um, unfortunately the spell fizzles if you remove the creature in response. Kind of like what, it's basically what Luca does but it's not on the Planeswalker body. And then we get a uh, Swiftwater Cliffs and a Zombie Token. Okay. 
So I think we've only hit one mythic so far, so. Hopefully we can start ratcheting it up a little bit. Okay, so the Alpine Watchdog. So I believe this is the other one that you get with uh, the Boris card. So when you look at it in the deck list, you'll be like, why is it playing a 2-2 Vigilance for two? And then it's like, oh wait, it's it's value. No matter how small the creatures are, still get value. Ooh. So there's, so we can actually compare because we got the foil. So there's the foil one versus the regular one. So you can see the difference in the artwork. So that's pretty cool. So this, you know, as a foil, that would probably look really nice. So this one, it's a one mana, one, two. Uh, sacrifice it, target opponent discards the card, activates the ability only anytime you can cast a sorcery. So that, you know, that seems kind of, you know, like a so-so ability, but I mean, I can imagine if you get your opponent down to one card and you know it's probably a bomb, then, you know, knocking it out of their hands seems quite strong. All right, so our first uncommon is Fungal Rebirth. So return target permanent card from your graveyard to your hand. If a creature died this turn, create two one one sapling tokens. So being an instant is huge on this card, right? Being able to make sure that you're going to be getting the saplings when you play this, and obviously you can get back the creature that they, uh, you know, if they kill the creature this turn, you can get it back right away. Uh, experimental overload. So create an XX blue and red wizard weird token. Sorry, not wizard. Uh, where X is the number of instant sorcery cards in your graveyard, then you may return an instant sorcery card exiled. I'm going to grab it to your hand. Exile Experimental Overlord. Overload. So this is kind of like a Crackling Drake. Instead of, um, you know, but instead of drawing a card, you get, um, you know, an instant sorcery exile. Maybe even one of these to kind of chain them together. And then, I mean, the, you know, Crackling Drake's a little bit different than that. It constantly checks where this is, you know, static when it comes in. But maybe not be a bad thing. And then we get a Pasiri Solidarity. So this is the plus one counter on each creature control. Not that exciting. And we get another Maze Mind Tome. So we're getting all the exciting ones out of the way. And we get a sweet uh, Griffin token. So, so far we've hit, what, two of the uh, rares we hit in the pre-release pack, so. Okay. Get through these. Thrill of Possibility, I think, is pretty cool. The fact that they upgraded it to an instant now. It seems like that's kind of the way they're going with uh, that effect. Because they reprinted the Sorcery Speed 1 a lot and didn't see a lot of play. So we hit our free counter spell and rewind. Another Selfless Savior. Volcanic Geyser. Pretty sweet uh, limited bomb. And another rare. It's a, another Cabrick. All right, so it seems like we hit. Uh, oh, and look at that cat token, though. Wow, I think that goes with the the. Uh, uh, I can't remember her name. Jarrell, I think. She's like the green uh, legendary that makes uh, tokens. But she's pretty cheap too. So those are uh, pretty sweet tokens that go with her. All right, so. Uh, Okay, we get an unsubstantiate reprint. Another Wildwood Scourge. Pretty sweet one. Battle Rattle Shaman. So that's a Rise of Aldrazi. Pretty good and limited. And our another rare, and it's Stormwing Entity. So this costs uh, three mana less to cast. You can cast instant or sorcery this turn. Three, three, Flying Prowess. Enters the battlefield, Scry two. So it's actually pretty good, you know, if you're playing any kind of deck that can that wants to play cheap spells like crash throughs and offs and stuff like that, being able to play this just two mana for this. And it's even not, not even two double blue, it's just one generic. So I could easily see that going in some kind of deck that, um, you know, tries to prowess a lot. And then we get our anointed cor Corister. Uh -huh, another foil. And a rugged Highland. And a Knight. Art Steward, Finds, Battlement, Visionary, ooh, Pitchburn Devils is back. Okay, so we get a reprinted Tavern Swindler. So this is just a fun coin flip card. Angelic Ascension, so this is 
Exile attack creature of Planeswalker. Its controller creates a 4-4 four, four, four angel token with flying. That's interesting. Yeah, that's my guess card I've ever seen one. That is definitely a Stasco card, the Storming Entity. For sure. So it's nice that they get to get rid of uh, Planeswalkers. I mean, I can see Control loving this card because you get to deal with Planeswalkers. And then you can sweep up the Angel token with a board wipe. So maybe it sees play. Uh, this is a 5 mana 5 4. So beginning of your end step. If your creature died this turn, draw a card. Seems pretty awesome and limited. And we get a Mythic. 5 5. Baneslayer Angel's back. That awesome art. And we get another foil, Destructive Tampering. So it destroys artifacts and creatures without flying camp off this turn. That's cool though, because you know, you're generally gonna want to use a second ability, but if the first one comes up, it's probably gonna be pretty relevant. And then another beast token. Okay, Skyway Sniper, another Palladium Mirror, Eliminate, that's a good one to get multiple copies of, and our rare, another Teferi's Ageless Insight, and a separate token. So what that makes like four of the uh, rares I've gotten in the pre-release pack already. Okay, so we get the White Shrine. So this one allows you to pay six mana to have a creature and it costs one less for each shrine you control. So this clearly is one that you, you know, it's only, you're only gonna play it in a shrine deck. But it's nice that it costs one white mana, so it powers up your other shrines too. And then our Polarian Kraken. So that's cool, they brought back Polaria. Uh, whenever you draw a card, you may pay one. If you do, when you do, it may tap or untap target creature. So our limited bomb another battle rattle shaman and our rare is spore weaver a spore web weaver so it's our looks like an anti-blue card so it's reach hex proof from blue and whenever it's dealt damage you gain one life and create a one one sapperling creature token that's all it doesn't create spiders but it seems like uh it's a little bit smaller than uh giant spider but just a little bit better and we get a foil Garrick Scorehorn. So there you go. That's what the uh, showcase cards look like foil. Pretty cool. What we got here. Okay, Unleash Fury. So this is the one that doubles a creature's power. Seems uh, pretty good in the right deck. Epitaph Column. So just a generic five, five mana, three five. It puts a card from your graveyard in the bottom of your library. So it seems pretty sweet late in the game, like limited when your library's getting pretty small. Lore Scale Quaddle. So our reprint, Snake. So I don't think this one's all constructed play before, so. And given the mana cost, sharing it with Earl, I doubt it'll see play now, but you never know. And our rare is Primal Might. Uh, Teferi, I think, was the second pack. Yeah, it was the second pack. And then we hit uh, Bane Slayer, the other mythic we got so far. So Primal Might. So target creature you control gets plus X, plus X, and then it turn. Then it fights with another creature you don't control. So this one seems quite good. Um, you know, because normally, like, the Prey Upon effect is just one mana. So essentially, you're getting at worst Prey Upon, and then you can pump additional mana into it and get some kind of other effect. And we get our Foil Unleashed Fury. So combos and our Sweet Cat token. So you unleash Fury a bunch of times, and, and uh, after you Primal Might. Yeah, no problem, Richard. Yeah, it was a uh, second pack, so... You know, we've been uh, waiting, getting still on that high for a while, so we're still waiting to see if we get uh, 
and then yeah, as exciting but yeah it's uh can't complain about that one that's for sure okay another steward Okay, so this is one I was talking about earlier. This is the Alpine, Alpine Hound. So when it enters the battlefield, you can search your library for a card name, Alpine Watchdog, and or a card name, Igneous Cur. Reveal them, put them in your hand, shelter library. And when it attacks, it gets plus X plus, plus, X, plus X plus zero, where X is the number of attacking creatures you control. And you can even see they're in the artwork with the uh, Hound Master. So we'll see where that goes in terms of playability, but it seems pretty sweet getting uh, two extra cards and also getting a bonus. Conclave Mentor. So finally we hit one of these ones. So this is just like Winding Constrict Constrictor, except it doesn't double the counters for players. But it has the added effect of when it dies, you gain life equal to its power. So quite strong. And because I know sometimes Constrictor would actually be a downside, especially if you got like negative counters to your creatures. So this just cares about plus one counters. So there's no downside with this card. And we get a Shipwreck Dowser, so this is a uh, 5 mana 3 3 prowess. And when it enters the battlefield, return an or sorcery from your graveyard to your hand. Seems quite awesome and limited. And our rare is another uh, of our cards uh, from our pre release pack. So, Sabira. So I think that's like 5 of 6, something like that. So we just need like a Scavenging Ooze, and then I can't remember the last card, and we'll hit them all. There's our showcase card. Basari's Acolyte. All right, Obsessive Stitcher. I've seen that one in the pre-release packs. Falcon Adapt, Adept, sorry. Again, we've seen that one before. Waker of Waves. So creatures your opponent control get zero, minus zero, minus one, minus zero. And then pay two, discard it. Look at the top two cards of your library. Put one of them into your hand and the other into your graveyard. So it seems great as like a reanimation target, right? Because you can pitch it. Get the effect and then later on bring it back. And we have a rare of Liliana's Standard Bear. So it enters the battlefield, draw X cards where X is the number of creatures that died under your control this turn. So obviously made for some kind of aggro deck. It has a nice little flash effect on there. And we get a foil colossal dread maw. Look at that. Some room here. So, gotta make sure that goes in the uh, foil pile. And our bird. Token. So I think that's a return Ravnica. Token art. Can we get a lot of popular cards? We're making a lot of birds. All right. Through here. All right. Bad deal. So you draw two cards, and each opponent discards two cards. Each player loses two life. That looks disgusting. <laughs> then there's Chandra's Pyrelane. So when a non a source you control deals non-combat damage to an opponent, it gets plus one, plus zero, and double strike until end of turn. Then another kinetic auger. And we get a rare in Liliana Standard Bearer. And we get the cool frame with this one. And we get a foil rare behind it. A 3-1. And we get another copy of it. So that's uh, the last three rares we've opened. So we're close to getting a full set of um, Liliana Standard Bearer. So I really hope this card takes off, right? What are the odds are of hitting the showcase version of a rare along with the foil a rare in the same pack? Can't be too high. Alright, so Furious Rise. So the beginning of the step, you can control a creature with power four greater, exile the top card of your library. You may play that card until you exile another card with Furious Rise. So that's kind of cool though that if they like get rid of this card. 
you can um, you know keep playing it even though it's gone. Another unsubstantiate. Another wicker of the waves. And our rare is Brash Taunter. So this is our new and improved stuffy doll is now a goblin. And the fact that it fights too is so obviously so much better than and it's another target creature too, so you know, obviously if you build your deck with this in mind, you have some big creatures for it to, to fight with. But being able to do that instead of just paying one. Pretty big upgrade. Like a stack of uh, Liliana standard bears. Okay, so we hit the blue shrine. So this one adds, uh, draw X cards, where X the number of shrines you control. If you do, discard a card. Well, that's not bad. So clearly this wants you to play a lot of shrines, so you only, don't, only have to lose one. Tide skimmer, skimmer, sorry. When this, uh, you attack with two or more creatures of flying, draw a card. So this is the kind of card where if you play the Lord, you know, making it a lot cheaper, makes it obviously a lot better. Our thrashing Brontodon reprint, always welcome. And our rare is another See the Truth. And we get a Showcase Swamp. And a Basiri Ket Emblem. So, be in combat, create a white 1-1 one, one soldier, then put plus 1 counter on each creature you control. Seems, seems quite strong. So it looks like we're about halfway down uh, to the box. So we've So hopefully we'll get uh, a few more mythics out of this. Going a little bit of a run here. Roaming ghost light. All right, so we had another cultivate. Riddle form, I believe that's another reprint too. So whenever you cast a non-creature spell, you may have it become a 3-3 flyer. You pay three mana and scry one. So again, another cool limited card. Twin blade assassins again. And our rare is another Containment Priest. So, you almost hit a playset of uh, Containment Priest now. But if you're going to get a playset of a card, that's probably a pretty good one to, uh, to hit on. Hate bears like that are always welcome. All right, so we get Invigorating Surge. Put a plus one, plus one counter on, each, on target creature control, then double the number of counters on that creature. So just a good old uh, pump spell. So at worst, you're getting two counters for three mana. This isn't great, but it's not the worst either. Quarian Dryad, look at that, as an uncommon now. That card was like rare a few times it got reprinted, so. That used to actually be like a big, uh, I don't know if it was extended or legacy card. Like it was like the backbone of a bunch of decks. This is like before Tarmogoyf and stuff like that, but. Yeah, it used to be a powerhouse because you obviously just play it, protect it, and just throw a bunch of counters on it every turn. Oops. Jumped our rare spot. So there's our Gago Master and Demonic Embrace. So, Chanted Creature is a plus three plus one, uh, flying, and is a demon. And they may cast it from your graveyard by paying three life and discarding a card in addition to paying its other costs. So, not the worst. You know, the fact that you can get it back is pretty cool. It's almost like an equipment in that case. I mean, discarding a cost is real, but you know, if you're in the late game, if you're an aggressive deck, you'll gladly discard a card and be able to get this back. So that's one. Egg, depending on what uh, kind of decks rise up, I could easily see being like a two of in a deck or something. You know, decks that don't care about the cards in their hand. And that's not even talking about like if there's any kind of cards that have synergy with it, where you actively want to be discarding cards because you know there's a lot of one mana, two ones in black that you can get back later in the game. All right. So we get uh, Teferi's Proje as a showcase card. The Mauler Shark Swift Response. Pretty good. I mean, it is two mana, so kind of surprising this kind of card doesn't see more play. Okay, so we get a Canopy Stalker. So it's our four mana, four two. Mostly blocked if able. 
And when it dies, you gain one life for each creature that died this turn. So this is kind of a different take on the can't must be blocked effect, where essentially you're just full, taking out a couple creatures, and if not, you get a four two. Okay, Burl Fist Oak. So when you draw a card, it gets plus two plus two until end of turn. So I know there's like a theme with blue with drawing cards. And there's a couple green cards too that care. So that would go nicely in that deck. Unlimited. All right, it's two two uh, prowess. You pay one red, sacrifice, and it deals damage equal to its power to target creature or planeswalker. So pretty good, you know. I'm not a, not a red mage, but I can only imagine if this could deal damage to a player, how uh, ridiculously good it would be. And our rare is Gadric, the Crown Scourge. So it's a five-four flyer for three, and can't attack unless you control four or more artifacts. And to be in your end step, you get to make a treasure for each non-token creature that died this turn. So a little bit of work, but the nice thing is that it can still block when you play it too. Ooh, the forest. Look at that. Showcase forest. I mean, the art's okay. The border is really, I think, pops. In our griffin. Yeah, it does have a very smog uh, kind of effect. There was, um, I want to say it's like one of the early M, M sets, like... 12 or 13, uh, there was like a dragon that kind of, I think it was supposed to be like smog. And like he had to like get counters on it or get counters off it or something like that. So but yeah, they tried to do that kind of effect before in very degrees of success. All right, so we get another Alpine Houndmaster. Not too shabby. A blue uh, shrine. A Kraken or Kraken. Another rare it is another Sab Sabira. And we get a foil track down. Let's describe three available top card of your library. If it's a creature or land, draw a card. Interesting. It's cool with that effect that it's not totally dead if uh, if it doesn't find what you're looking for. You know, it's not just strictly find a creature or or land. Like if you hit another track down, you know, you're not obligated to get rid of it. You can keep it if you want. So obviously you'd prefer to put a creature land on top to draw it immediately. But for some reason you only had you know, non-creature, non, uh, non-land cards on top. Okay, so here's a regular looking uh, Ch uh, Chandra's Pyrelink. Meteorites, a classic uh, limited card. We get a showcase to various tutelage. So, this is, so it enters, you draw a discard. Then whenever you draw a card, target opponent mills to you. So this is one of those sweet build arounds that get uh, get annoying in multiples. It looks it has a very like saga look with this uh, frame. It has a very old school uh, blue frame look to it. And then our rare is Feline Sovereign. So other cats you control get plus minus one and have protection from dogs. And then when one or more cats you control deals common damage to a player, destroy up to one target artifact or enchantment that player controls. So it seems especially like a sweet uh, card for. Um, for EDH, right, to be able to build around that effect. And then we get a Full Art Containment Priest. So I believe that completes our set of Containment Priests. It was weird because I saw it peeking out from the side, but I thought, oh, that, maybe that's just like the token, but I'm like, isn't the land first? So there you go. I did not realize that uh, you get Full Arts like these in the uh, packs. So that was a double... Uh, Double rare pack. Uh, I'm going to put that one in sleeve. Just because it looks too cool to potentially have it get uh, any damage on it. That's cool. So we got two full art cards in the box. Of course, they hook you when they, they, they do stuff because they know some people like myself are going to be like, well, I need them. You know, you know, any special, uh, if I have one, I can't just have one. But, I mean, the regular ones are still pretty awesome. Especially if it's like Ugin, it's like I'm not going to spend all that money on a play set of fancy Ugins. Okay, so Garrick's Uprising enters the battlefield. If you control a creature with power four or greater, draw a card, and then creature control of trample. And whenever a creature, you could, uh, creature with power four or greater enters the battlefield under your control, draw a card. So a lot of card drawing. Essentially, if you play big stuff, you get rewarded, and they also get trample. 
So Bolt Hound, so this is a 2-2 two -two haste. When it attacks, other creatures you control get plus one, plus zero until end of turn. So this has, um, was it, not Mentor, um, is it Mentor? I don't know, I remember there was another, yeah, I think it's Mentor. The creatures, when it attacks, creatures get plus one, plus zero. All right, Tide Skimmer, and our rare is Nambi, a Steam Speaker. So when it enters the battlefield, you may return another target creature you control to its owner's hand. If you do gain life equal to that creature's convert a mana cost. So this is a good way to save your creatures, giving it has flash. And then you can pay three to tap it, discard a legendary card, draw two cards. So pretty cool. Allows you to pick itself up and uh, discard and get more value. All right, so it looks like we have uh, two, four, six, eight packs left. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna admit we're a little low on the mythics right now. So hoping this uh, picks up a little bit here. I mean, as good as the Teferi is, it's kind of a shame if you only get one, <laughs> two mythics in the box. So which is Cauldron? So this is. One mana, but then you can pay two, tap, sacrifice creature, gain life, and draw a card. So it's kind of like a cauldron for non-food cards. Uh, Curry and Dryad. Another Bolt Hound. And a Mythic. It's got some kind of a fiery border on it. Looks like that's a pretty fancy Chandra right there. See, you just have to complain and you get whatever you want. <laughs> Seems to be the uh, how it always works. So a showcase Chandra. So it seems like all of the, the planeswalkers then clearly then have like a million different forms if you can get um, showcase versions of them as well. So her so she's five mana and the plus one is discard your hand and exile the top three cards of your library until the end of. End of turn, you may play those cards exile this way. So unlike a lot of cards, they try to push this effect. This one, you only get to the end of the turn. So it's not like the one that's seeing in play in standard right now where it gets in the next turn. But the, of course, your, the goal is to untap this and then use that effect. Um, the, her other plus one is deals two damage to any target. So that's clearly the one you're supposed to use when it comes into play. And then her minus nine is search your library graveyard. Start, search your library and graveyard for any number of Red instant and or sorcery cards, exile them, then shuffle to the library. You may cast um, them this turn, add six red. So yeah, hopefully if you, that happens, you should be able to win the game on the spot. Yeah, I don't know, I'd, I'd be surprised if she's worth a lot. I mean, she looks way cool though, so that's what matters to me. Here's a showcase uh, Garrick's Gorehorn. Okay, yeah, another experimental overload. Warden of the Woods, Goreman. This star looks like it should be like a rare, right? So this is additional cost to cast, sacrifice a creature, flying trample order, five, five. And when it enters the battlefield, each opponent sacrifices a creature. So essentially if it comes into play, each player sacrifices a creature. Not bad. Definitely a limited card, but not bad. And another rare is Azusa, Lost But Seeking. That's another, uh, it's cool to see her with that frame. And we get an island and a soldier token. Okay, so we get a showcase Garrick's Uprising. Another Tavern Swindler. Ooh, the Angelic Ascension. And another Mythic. I think it's a uh, looks like a White Planeswalker to me. There he is, Basiri Cat. So this is the new uh, Planeswalker they created for the set. So um, this one's clearly geared towards, I think, Aggro decks. Because his plus one is put a plus one counter on one target creature. It gains Indestructible until in turn. And then minus two is when uh, one or more non-token creatures attack this turn, create that many 1-1 one, one white soldier to creature tokens tapped and attacking. So that's kind of the main draw to him. And then as you saw in our, we got an emblem earlier, so 
It's uh, at the beginning of combat and in your turn, create a 1 1 white soldier token and then put a plus 1 counter on each creature you control. So he's got a pretty good uh, plus 1 counter theme going on with him. And that construct token, look at that. That means business. Got kind of that Robocop Robo uh, thing going there. All right, so we're down to uh, six packs to go. All right, so let's see what we have here. All right, so we finally hit the red shrine. So this is one pay one, discard a land card or a shrine card. Uh, this deals X damage to our creature, planeswalker, where X is the number of shrines you control. So a pretty good way to funnel your lands, and if you need to in a pinch, uh, your shrines. Liliana's Devotee, so it looks like a zombie lord. For three mana, you get a 2-3. Gives all other zombies plus one by zero. And at the beginning of your end step, if a creature died this turn, you may pay two if you do create a 2-2 two -two black zombie token. Uh, I don't know if this one's like constructive viable, but it's pretty close. I mean, it's a shame he's not himself a zombie, but he does make zombies too. You know, if you're playing, especially if you're playing a deck where you can sacrifice stuff at will. And then we get Ray, Reign of Revelation, so four mana, draw three, discard a card. So not bad. And our rare is Baron Tolarian Archmage. So it is the battlefield, return up to one target creature, Planeswalkers to its owner's hand. At the beginning of your end step, if the permanent was put into your hand from the battlefield this turn, draw a card. So one of your kind of annoying tempo blue cards. And we get a Rugged Highland and a Sapling token. All right, pack number five. Watchdog. Ooh, an Acolyte in showcase. Sorry. Okay, Traitor's Greed. So this is the threat, and that cost gives you, gives you two mana when you play it. Another Witch's Cauldron. Burl Fist Oak. And... Well, I don't know if you can read that, but that sort of likes a, uh, a mythic. <laughs> That's in foil variety. But before we get to that, let's see if we can pull off the... Uh... Oh, there you go. That's double. It looks like a double mythic pack. So this one looks like it's got power and toughness, and the other one looks like it's... Uh... Yeah. Unfortunately, neither. I think the, the number's not low enough to uh, <laughs> be a Nugan, but we'll see what we get. So this is the Terror of the Peak. So this is the uh, dragon I see people playing with. So it's 5 mana, 5-4 five, flyer. Additional cost to cast. Uh, you get to pay 3 life. But when it enters the battle, when another creature enters the battlefield and you control, this deals damage equal to that creature's power to any target. Well, that's pretty gross. Effectively giving your creatures haste. And if they have haste, then it's like double haste. Or it acts as a removal spell. So that's definitely a bingo. And we get a Foil Grim Tutor. Holy cow. Look at that. I mean, I know it's no Ugin, but uh, that's a pretty good foil to get. That's a sleeve-worthy foil right there. I remember seeing somebody uh, had one. I think it was like a uh, somebody had played a while, and they remember he had like a you know one of the little four-page, four-card uh, pocket binders. And he had a Grim Tutor from the 99 starter, where it was from, um, like, in the binder. And it was, like, his favorite card. And I was like, man, I'd love to get that card. And that was, like, one of the best cards in the set. And here we are, years later, I opened up a foil Grim Tutor. So there you go. Pretty good so far. <laughs> well, that's a way to turn a box around. <laughs> from sad times to uh, pretty happy times. Okay, another Obsessive Stitcher, Seed Striker, Malefic, uh, Malefic uh, Scythe, and a Rare, another Peer into Abyss. So I think we're just missing Ooze from our, uh, our uh, pre-release pack uh, shenanigans, and we'll build up everything. All right, so last three packs to go.
All right, so we get. Okay, Jeskai Elder. So this is a reprint from Cons. So our 1 1 prowess. When it deals common damage to a player, may draw if you do discard. Leafkin Avenger. So remember, Leafkin uh, is we're in the last set, of course, set. So this uh, taps for plus uh, for mana for each creature with power four or greater. So at worst, it's going to be one mana. Especially given that they can't respond to it either, given it's a mana ability. And you can pay eight mana to deal damage equal to its power to target creature or planeswalker. Sorry, target player or planeswalker. So very good. Uh, seems like a pretty sweet limited card. We get Faith's Fetters, so a reprint from the original Ravnica. So it's a pretty good catch-all because it gains your full life and then Enchanted Permanent can attack or block and its activated abilities can't be activated unless they're mana abilities. So pretty good. And they obviously had enough foresight to make it so that you can't activate abilities on Planeswalkers even though they hadn't been printed yet. And our rare is Volcanic Salvo. So this costs X less to cast where X is total power of creatures you control. It deals 6 damage each of up to 2 target creatures and or Planeswalkers. So kind of a Kind of an odd card. I'd say it's more like a, a filler. We get that sweet goblin wizard. All right. Second last pack. Okay, Light of Promise. Ooh, a Silver Smoke uh, Ghoul. I think that's our third. Including the foil. Soul Seer deals 5 damage to target creature or planeswalker. That permanent loses indestructible until end of turn. So even though it's kind of hard to first look at and be like, yeah, that's obviously too expensive to see play in a constructive format. I mean, if there are uh, creatures that are a pain that are really obnoxious, I mean, this definitely is a potential sideboard card. And our rare is Temple of Triumph. Huh. That's funny because I almost forgot they were in this uh, in this set because I obviously this is the first one we've gotten. And then we get our Thornwood Falls and a Knight. But this does mean that they're going to line up with the other um, Swarry Land, so this shouldn't become a too big surprise to get reprinted. All right, and our last pack. Okay, a Furious Rise. Enthralling Hold. So this is the ones that let you control a uh, tapped creature. Fierce Empath. So this is, I think, all the way back from Scourge. So it lets you get a big creature from your deck and put it into your hand. Pretty good, especially like for EDH. It's a pretty solid reprint. And we get a rare, 6-6 six, six rare. Looks like it's red. It's Chandra's Incinerator. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it wouldn't be too bad if they were like Shocklands or something that had a lot of value, but at this point, I mean, I mean, I know even when the Temples came out last year, last uh, in M20, you know, they had no value, so I can only imagine how much it's gone down. So this is one I saw before, and I wasn't sure, um, you know, for Burn and Modern, obviously this goes, because it costs like X less to cast, where X is the total amount of non-combat damage dealt to an opponent this turn. 6-6 six, six Trampler, and whenever a source control deals damage to an opponent, uh, this deals that much damage to her creature or planeswalker that player controls. So again, I have no idea if this is going to be good, if it's worth building your deck around, like changing your deck to fit this in, because, I mean, this seems quite, you know, just seen as a 6-6 six, six Trampler, right? You dealt 6 damage to them with a couple of Lightning Bolts. Seems quite strong to get this into play. But, you know, it might turn out to be too much uh, work. And we get a zombie token. All right, so let's take a little bit of the inventory here and see how we did. Move our stack of cards over out of the way.
So yeah, so if you look at our, our mythics, we ended up with... Uh, so we got two borderless cards. I'm not sure what the average is, but we ended up with that Sweet Teferi. And we got a uh, Containment Priest. Um, I mean, we got six mythics overall, which I think is pretty good. You know, it's pretty much a standard. Um, I mean, clearly hitting a foil Grim Tutor is, you know, that and the Teferi are the highlights out of the box. Even the Chandra is nice. I mean, getting a showcase Chandra. And then, I mean, even like the non, um, you know, fancy versions of cards. I mean, Basiri's awesome. Bane Slayer Angel is always great. And Terror of the Peaks, I think, is one of the new cards that really is uh, has potential to be a real force and kind of bringing back kind of more of a mid-range Gruel deck or some kind of deck, you know, that wants to play a big scary dragon. So, yeah, I agree. It kind of, for a while there, it looked like it was going to be kind of meh. It's like, yeah, you got Teferi, but then not much else. And even if you look at, like, some of the rares we got, you know, like you said, we avoided the hitting all the temples, but we hit an Azusa. I mean, we got a bunch of Containment Priests. We got a couple of those. Oh, sorry, we actually missed one. Totally forgot about that one. So we actually ended up with seven mythics. Jeez. Let me hit a solemn. So yeah, obviously it's a pretty sweet box. Hitting that many mythics. And getting kind of the fun cards like that. And that's not even counting like some of the additional stuff we got, right? Like our three uh, little different uh, Liliana's standard bearers. And then you throw on the top, uh, you know, on top of that, you get, you know, the buy a box, you get this promo, you get the hanger back walker promo. You know, it's definitely a little bit different than years ago when you didn't get any buy a box promo. Yeah, it definitely makes up for the lack, lack, lackluster pre release, pro, um, pre release product. But, I mean, it definitely, uh, it's a little bit different game than what it used to be when you would get, you know, just hoping to get kind of some of the good. Good rares, or even when they were mythics, some decent mythic rares. But yeah, so awesome. Well, thanks for everyone that tuned in, and I uh, hope you enjoyed uh, watching some of the goodies that got pulled out of the box. And uh, yeah, next uh, we'll see in the future what else we're going to open. But uh, I'm sure we'll be back at some point in the near future opening up uh, more magic products. So thanks for everyone for tuning in, and uh, have a good night.